finger. That's good. Move your tongue around more. That turns me on. I love that. Don't stop. Put your hands all over my soft. Fifteen is three hundred bucks. It's a long process and intense feeling for the other person. I think for myself too. Even though it's physical, but for some reason it's it's also more emotional. Make me come. I'm an artist. I'm a performance artist. I'm hired for people to fulfill their fantasies, their deep, dark fantasies. Dungeon master. I was a full dungeon in my house. Make me come. Hello everyone, my name is Nopad and on an Iron Games for fun. So what are we doing tonight? Well, tonight we're gonna to be working more on Gachi Muchi Super Smashers, a game about superheroes smashing crime. Now, uh the reason why we're doing this so late at night is actually for a few reasons. Most notably, I've been struggling with a mechanic, as you kind of see here, the idea of stamina and health. Uh, stamina and health have actually been a major issue for this game, actually, because I know exactly how it should work. That's the problem. And I could write it in a way that would be a functional method, but actually doing that would actually be a lot more paperwork that I'm willing to subject others for, for what effectively boils down to a shitpost RPG. Now... Here's the idea. As you can kind of see here, the idea of burning and straining is pretty simple. I'll get to that in a second, McDrusel. I'll get to that in a second. You, you are hitting on an idea. I said I'm going to open up my notepad. There we go. <laughs> One second, my... Uh, my, my my innocent friend has decided to show up, and uh, he's asking me why why are we naming it that way? Uh, I'm, uh, let me just send him Gachi. So the basic idea is pretty simple, all things considering. The original was you have a health bar, and you have like a quote stamina bar. 
Now, the stamina bar changed in a few different ways, because originally this game is actually based off a game called Sifu. Sifu had a thing called the structure bar, which pretty much the more it built up, if you hit a certain point, you're either going to get massively stunned, you're going to take a lot of damage, something bad is going to happen if you get your structure bar filled up all the way. Contrasting that, you also have enemies who, you second you filled up their structure bar, you kick them in the fucking face and instantly down them. Now, this structure bar was supposed to be kind of the main mechanic, however, there's a distinct issue with this. In a digital format, this works pretty easy, because you that structure bar is changing by its nature. I do not have to consciously think about increasing my structure bar at all. Nor do I have to consciously think about improving my stamina bar or like being able to like go back and forth on it. Because one of the big things is I wanted this stamina bar or this you know structure bar in general to be going up and down pretty consistently because it's I want you to use it to do things because I'm also going to be tying it to your ability to block damage. The health bar, on the other hand, was going to be something more along the lines of a method to reduce, not reduce damage necessarily, but the health bar was the idea of you've been hurt and it's not going to go back up for the pretty much the rest of the session. It's something that is very temporary in a way. Just to double check, this game is tone is like a scene from Sharknado where the male stripper kills a flying shark with a well-timed pelvic thrust, right? Uh, the best way to kind of think about the uh, correct tone of this game would be a deadly serious gay porn. That That's the best way I can think about it. It's a deadly serious gay porno. Uh, where everything that's currently happening is actually like, yeah, we're totally invested. We're just all, you know, gay porn stereotypes. Now... The issue here was the management of the, stru the stamina bar was doing a few different things. At first it was like, hey, you gain stamina, stamina is equal to your health bar, then you, you're broken effectively, so you only have a certain amount of stamina. On one hand, it was like, okay, maybe it would be something more akin to, this isn't a bank robbery, this is anal sex. <laughs> Pretty much. Again, you know, picture like, ah, uh, I'm going to rob a bank and I'm like running away with the money and suddenly a guy shows up wearing full spandex. You clearly see the massive thing in his spandex and he's looking at you and your ass is on the menu and you're like, oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. Oh, no. Uh, effectively, you can also associate this as uh, Chuck Tingle's world into the world of superhero drama. Uh, to give you the the right tonal tonal uh, shift in this one. <laughs> that's got I got I've got to constantly send my uh my friend Gachi Gachi Muchi to make sure he understands what we're dealing with here. Now the issue with this is just the kind of the management of the health bar was being a little bit weird. Uh, to I drew this out. <laughs> um. Which is the idea of, hey, pretty much the more damage you're taking, the more damage you take, the less stamina you have. So, you know, at first, when you first, you know, jump into the, jump into the fight, you actually have a good deal of stamina to play with. And that means you're able to strain your stamina. You're going to get it back, but you're kind of straining your stamina to, you know, block, you know, to... Bump up your dice, your dice pips a little bit. You're going to be spending your stamina to block hits, help your allies out. You're pretty much burning stamina all the way up. You want to constantly increase that stamina. Constantly increase that stamina. Always increase it until you get to a point where it's like, ooh, maybe I, you know, I spent too much or whatever. But then if you do take damage, like you try to dodge and somebody punches you, or you just don't want to spend any more stamina because you need to spend it for something else. You're going to take damage. When you take damage, your maximum stamina will decrease. So it's like, okay, that that immediately brings a new dimension when it comes to something with, uh, say, someone brings out a knife. Where, you know, deadly weapons do actually have a little bit of more like, oh, fuck, I can't just block a deadly weapon with my hand because I'm going to get stabbed and I'm going to lose health, which in turn means I'm going to lose stamina. That was kind of the the, uh, the sentiment there, but again, like the issue here with this method is you now have to manage the, the health system in a reasonable manner. 
Because I can't make it like you have 10 health. And because you have 10 health to work with, it's like that means you have 10 stamina. But that means you have 10 stamina that you can say, oh, well, I'm just going to make it so that I get all my dice back with paying it forward with that entire mechanic at all times. And there's no threat to anything because I'm just going to constantly be able to spend my dice going forward. I'm like, that doesn't work necessarily. So I've been like trying to go back and forth about like, what's the ideal way of doing this? The option, uh, you can kind of say that uh, the nuclear option is just scrap health entirely. You know, just entirely scrap the concept of health. And you just have a number of stamina. You know, you, you'd have like, I don't know, we'll, we'll just say 10 out of 10 stamina at this point. Where you burning stamina is like, okay, you know, I'm permanently reducing the, my total amount of stamina. While straining it is, I'm lowering my temporary amount. This is all, you know, based on the battle you're currently in. So it's kind of this back and forth of like, I want to get more dice. So I'm going to burn my stamina, but if I want to get more pips to upgrade my dice effectively and make them better, it's a temporary thing. But I have to use this to block. I have to use this this. Where does health come in with this? Uh, what I was thinking is of effectively making uh, tying health to... You pretty much have like a very limited pool of health that's going to... If you do take a lethal hit or something, you know, let's say your stamina gets broken or something, you're going to take a piece of damage. Which is going to go on to, you're going to take a piece of damage, piece of damage, piece of damage, piece of damage. I don't know if that's going to work, though. <laughs> that's always the funny thing. I, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if that's going to be too complicated. Because what I'm, I'm worried about right now in my brute force method. The absolute brute force method is... Enemies, you're pretty, much al you're pretty much you're just going to have two health... You're going to effectively have two health bars to manage... One of which is constantly increasing and decreasing at the same time. And this is like on a round by round basis. So if there's like a three rounds, that bar effectively, that amount of resources has gone up and down, up, down, up, down constantly, which doesn't really feel that well until I'm like, can I expect a, can I expect players and in turn like a GM or something to like, Oh, well, I have 12 stamina or whatever. I'm going to put like two D6s in front of me so I know I have 12 stamina. And I expect a player to do that. Is that fair for a player? Is that fair for me as a, as a developer to assume like, yeah, you're just going to do this because I told you to do it. Even though that's like the math behind it's a little bit funky. I don't know the right answer. I, I tried to get some help earlier today, but we kind of went on our uh, usual, you know, Completely non non consequential, co you know, conversations about Turkish oil wrestling or something like that. I've been trying to find the kind of the ideal way of looking at things, and it's a little bit easier said than done in that regard. Yeah, you know, I you should only assume player, you know, players read half the rules. Exactly. That's why I want to make things pretty simple. Because the entire idea behind Super Smashers is that it is effectively an episodic game. It is a game that I expect people to play like as a like even like even like per session. Like you're gonna do like a full like a full little thing, like a pretty I wouldn't say a pretty hard you know method of like you know the faces or whatever, but it's very much going to be like. You're going to start the session, beginning of the adventure, and at the end of the session, you have ended the adventure. You're done with the mission. You're done with the you know, the crime taking place. And I think in going the episodic route would be better. Not necessarily like, I don't want campaigns of this or whatever. More along the lines of like, this is kind of a self-contained thing. You can play once or you can string them together if you want. Thus, I don't want the math to be like super overbearingly complicated, mostly when it comes to resource management. Resource management has its places. I do not think it is appropriate for this game. Uh, so I've been kind of going back and forth on it. And this is... The thing that I'm proposing here is not a thing. Fractory period joke. Not sure. It, it, I could probably do something like Sage Time. But like... One of the ideas behind things like Sage Time and moments like that is... 
Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to structure everything in a, a phase system. Pretty much it's going to be like, here's the introduction phase. Here's where you're going to introduce what's going on. You're going to introduce what's happening. And then you're going to go to, you know, the story phase, which you're kind of learning more about the case. You're kind of do making checks at this point to like trying to figure something out. And then it's like, okay, we're going to go to a combat phase. We're going to learn about more things going on. We're doing, we're generally doing things to get to the ending, to the kind of the climax phase. And one of those phases or something like that would be something akin to, you know, sage time, which is you chill the fuck out and you recover something. You're recovering your health a little bit. You're recovering your like supplies or gadgets or something like that. Because generally speaking, again, I want things to be fairly self-contained. Hence, you kind of see up here with the strict phase system. But this has really been the really been the bugbear. Because this is what's holding everything together. Like at the at the very basic, the system, the game system works okay. Because all it is is you take your number of D6s, you roll them, yeah, look at what you got. Oh, I've got two fives, a uh, four, three, and a one. Two ones. In total, I've rolled 10, 14, 17, nine, I've rolled 19. I could spend my stamina. I'm pretty much, you know, spending my stamina a little bit to increase, the, you know, these two fives to sixes. So I can now give these two sixes to, I've rolled a 21, but I've also been able to give these dice to somebody else. I'm paying it forward. And I, okay, I'm going to give it to my, my friend, my next, you know, my, uh, my ally. And now suddenly he has two extra dice to play with. And he's taking those and he's adding it to his pool to do something else. Putting this all together, though, it's it relies so heavily on this fucking stamina system and getting it to work. And I've, I've looked, mind you. I'm not like... Stamina and exhaustion just doesn't exist, really. You know, maybe like a stamina... I'm like, yeah, just stamina systems in general. They're like, just don't do it. That's just not a thing you should do. You should never do something like this. And people have tried. That's the thing. People have tried. And it just doesn't work. And it's like, oh, well, this isn't really, really the ideal way of looking at this. Yeah. Alternatively, I like the one thing I can do is use tokens. That's another thing I can very much do is like, here is, here is a token that you can physically use. Yeah, so it's like, what's the ideal here? What is my my shining ideal? What's the, the thing tying this all together? And welcome to game design. Welcome to game design, everybody, where I sit here and ponder something really stupid. Like, <laughs> that's, the, that's the beautiful part. Because the brute force method is you have two bars. Effectively, you you just have two bars to fuck around with, and one is health, one is stamina. One goes down, you just get it all back at the beginning of the round. Effectively, because I want people to constantly use stamina. That's the big thing. I constantly want you to use stamina, always using it, because it is useful. That's the entire idea. You're superhero. Well, you, you are heroes. That's the point. Hmm. Yeah, and no, I've been trying to think of like what what's the what's the way to do this. And generally speaking, that just isn't really a thing that people have done smoothly without again relying on something like a token. But I don't want to bring tokens into the mix because the thing is, I don't want to bring tokens into the mix because that's going to make things complicated. I'm not sure how smart it is, but you can stand it from my anime game right now. And basically, resources doubles as a health bar. Reverse death spiral starts. Yeah, God, don't forget, don't fucking remind me about the reverse death spiral. God, we gotta go over TBZ tonight. Ah! 
But yeah, it's one of the things what I want to do is that like you are very tough if you stay, you know, you, if you are competent, you're going to be able to stay upright and standing. It's if you start making little errors, if you start trying to compensate for your failures, that's when things start getting strained. That's when you start getting hurt. And it's always a smarter idea to, hey, I'm going to target someone's health bar versus targeting somebody's, you know, stamina. So if I can target someone's stamina, I'm going to try to reduce the total amount of stamina they have by, you know, wrestling them or something. And if I'm wrestling them, that means I can more easily hurt them. Because <sighs> that's the dichotomy between uh, wrestling and striking is wrestling is going to be striking the stamina. Striking is dedicated going after your health bar. Unless I want to... If we se separate it out as two separate bars, let's just say if we separate it out like that, I would probably make something like health with the muscle plus mask, muscle plus mask, while this, you know, theoretical stamina bar, stamina bar would be more along the idea of like, like, ma it would be something along the idea of instead of muscle plus mask, it would be like macho plus mask. Unless we do, unless we recontextualize, unless we recontextualize health to be something more along the idea of, um, is what we can do if, fuck. Because right now, I'd say there's three different methods. We can do the, you know, we can effectively do the two-state solution, you could say. The two-state solution being that there is a health bar and, you know, health bar and stamina. I don't really know what else to call it right now. Just the stamina bar. You have a health bar and a stamina bar. If one hits zero, you're either out of the fight with your health bar or you are pretty much heavily exposed to getting your shit rocked from, you know, with your, with your stamina bar. You're pretty much off balance. Something really bad is going to happen. Your structure is zero. Your posture is zero. It's bad. You're having a bad time. Everybody's having a bad time. Option B is the one state is the one state solution in which there is just the you know quote health bar health bar that doubles that doubles as stamina stamina plus HP pretty much you are constantly going back to the idea of I have I'm burning my my HP kind of like my total stamina and straining my un and my not my max stamina. I'm straining my temporary. If I have very low max stamina, that means I have very low temporary, and I can't really do. My, I'm like I'm very much kind of I need to recover, but I've kind of fucked up. I, I'm burning away my energy. Right, now, not be as healthy. This does imply more. I would say more of an abstracted, like strict, like meat point system, like abstracted meat points. Simply, simply not necessarily them being meat points, but more along the lines of them being a method for people to take actual damage. This person has brought a knife and he has stabbed you. You have been stabbed and you are not having a good time. What has happened there? What is the what is the thing? Like, okay, all right, all right, all right. I don't know. Not the funny part. This is the hellish part right now. This is the uh, this is the uh, funny, funnily, um, funnily uh, hilarious part, uh, where I am starting to regrow my beard. I shave it off, and it's just very itchy. It's great. Hmm. 
The, I guess the other alternative moment was like, we just redo, like, we redo this entire system. I'm not, I'm not keen on that. Hmm. Yeah, this is this is one of those things. Or we can treat stamina. We, or we can do it the other direction, which is more along the idea that like stamina, like stamina resource, like this is like stamina is the abstracted abstracted resource versus versus the more set value HP. That could be another option, which is more along the idea of being like you have you have X stamina. You have X stamina. You must you must uh do an action. You must do an action to recover stamina. So it's kind of like the idea, like you have a set amount of resources, and it's like okay, I can if I you know put out my you know my resources here. I've got my you know five six stamina in total. And because I've got my five, six stamina in total, I'm saying, okay, I'm straining, I'm straining one, I'm just gonna strain a second one, and I have two, you know, I have two, you know, three stamina left, but I wanna block an attack more efficiently. I'm gonna strain another one, strain another one. Strain another one. I have no more stamina. They can go through all of me, and I'm getting fucked up effectively. That could work, actually. So what, what do we abstract? What do we compromise? That, that's uh, that's arguably the question here. Where do I compromise? Is treating health as the abstraction a smarter decision, or is treating stamina as the abstraction a smarter decision? St stamina is going to be the thing we're going to play be playing with the most, the absolute most. What do I want an attack to look like? What do, what am I really seeing an attack to look like? All right, everyone. I'm gonna. I'm gonna th we're gonna debate an attack here real fast. So we've got no mechanics for it, but we can definitely we can definitely pretend we do. So let's say, for example, I want to I want to punch someone. I want to use my strike. So I'm gonna say, let's say I have a three in my strike. I'm gonna take my three dice there, and I'm gonna be using my I'm gonna be using my muscle to do it. And let's say I have a four in my muscle. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. Cool. I got all my dice. I'm gonna. I say, hey, I got this big dice pool here, but I can split this up into various ways. I want to attack multiple opponents. Let's say I just want to roll everything at once. Take all my dice, and I roll. I roll wowie zowie. I rolled pretty fucking terribly as usual in any of these examples. So I've got three fives, four, uh, two, and two ones. So that would be 15, 19, 21. I rolled a 23 effectively on... Fucking 76. God fucking damn it. Now, this is the thing where it gets a little bit complicated. We want to do this versus a target number, because that's how that effectively how it goes. Now, most target numbers are actually going to be opposed in some way, which is to say, you know, the enemy is going to have... The enemy is going to have, say, you know, he's going to have his 4d6, and he's going to roll and be like, man, I roll jack shit. Um... I got a 12, I got a 6, 12, 16, 17. Oh, damn it, I've taken damage. You know, I've been decked in the nose. I'm getting hurt. Now, as the as the character, you damn well know you've done, you've hit this guy pretty fucking reliably. So you're going to be like, hey, you know what? I'm going to strain my stamina, and I want to increase one of my fives. One of my stamina to a six. So I can now pay that dice forward to a different check. I can pay that dice forward to somebody else. That's what a basic attack looks like. Now, the secret to huge success here is you don't want to do that. You just don't want to roll a bunch of dice altogether. You want to say, hey, yeah, I've got this 7d6 here for my combat pool, so I'm going to say I want to spend four on this guy and three on this guy. And yeah, 
roll the dice, wowie zowie, I rolled amazingly on this example. And he's, let's see, he rolled a 6, 6, 5, 1, so that would be 12, 17, I rolled an 18, what did he roll? He rolled jack shit as usual. Uh, he got a 5, 9, 11, 12, uh, 13. So, I've hit. Now, I've, I've, I've hit him, but I can pay it forward to my next attack. Add it back to my pool, for example. I've hit the first guy. Say, okay, my second attack, I'm going to spend only three of my dice as well. I've rolled, man, I've rolled jack shit. Let's see what he's rolling. Ah, he rolled way better than me. He blocks it. I still have two dice to play with. I'm going to... I'm going to attempt to punch him again. I roll. I rolled pretty well. I got a nine. He's going to take his four. His four, and he rolled better than me. But he'll say I'm going to strain once. And I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to take that five I rolled and turn it into a six. Pay it to somebody else. Pay it forward. Yo. How do we make it run better? If I punch you in the nose. I, you know, I rush up to you, I bonk you in the nose, you know, you're not doing a good time here. What are you, what's going to happen to you? Let's say he's going to take strength damage, let's say he's going to take... I'm going to be striking, I want to go directly for his health bar. He has two options, he can either try to... Actually, no, that makes sense, we can, we're effectively going straight for his health bar. That's the entire idea. I mean, I'm attempting to hit him to bring him down. I'm trying to strike him. I'm trying to do a haymaker. If we reduce his stamina to zero, we can immediately say we use an action and bring him down kind of thing. That's the issue with minions. They're very easy to bring down. You can reduce their stamina or you can punch them in the noggin. Punching them means their stamina is going to be their amount of defense die they're going to be playing around with. <sighs> Welcome to the wonderful world where absolutely fucking nothing because this is fucking awful. Fuck me. Exalted <sighs> gotchi. Nah, we're not doing that. See, that was Nirvana Seekers, thank you very much. And Nirvana Seekers had its own... Nirvana Seekers had its own method of doing things. Hmm. Because the entire idea, what I wanted to do, is that it's a little bit more anomalous with the idea of being able to, like, jump between enemies and deal damage. It's like, oh, okay, I am... By virtue of being a hero, I kind of have this flowing combat motion of being like, oh, I'm bump, 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 I'm hitting a bunch of people, and now you're like, bump, bump. And you're like, oh, I'm going to hit this guy just for a lot of damage while he's trying to hit multiple people as well. So you're, you're kind of all jumping around the fight because that's who you are, you're heroes. Maybe we do use stamina as... Maybe we do use stamina as the abstracted resource that everybody has a set value of high health to. <sighs> then that that that's that's telling me we should then tie health to its own thing to make that independent of any attributes. Because if we tie if we pretty much if we abstract stamina out, suddenly stamina is its own thing. And we can only base health off of certain, you know, certain things without, you know, like, where, where's the advantage of taking something else? Where would I be an advantage of taking something else? Because one idea would be... I, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to power through, 
this. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get as much as the hero creation stuff done and just think on it right now because I there there just isn't a right option and it's kind of fucking annoying. Cause I can see it, it's right there, it's just not if this was Vidya, this could work pretty well because you have just this automatic system of being able to track all these things. That's the issue. It's not a complicated idea. It's just the fact that this is an analog method that we have to now worry about. But how do I get around it? That's the question. How do I get around this being an analog system? Okay, so you know what, let's, um, let's do this. <laughs> so, here. When a hero has, when a hero has joined the the ranks, uh, has joined the ranks of the masked vigilant of the masked vigilante of the vigilantes of the world of the world, they have don they they have part of a powerful fraternity. A turn, it's the fraternity of man. The heroes join the ranks of the masked vigilantes of the world. They have become part of a powerful fraternity uh, of the of those united united in the face of tyr face of tyranny and injustice. And injustice. However, however, unlike unlike the comic books, however, unlike the comic books, uh, these hero uh, these heroes are very are. He Readjust my life here real fast. Let me just. Unlike the comic books, these heroes are human. Oh, uh, with. Hmm. With problems and. Actually, with strengths. And weaknesses. Weaknesses which plague. Which plague every. Every one of them. Which plague every one of them. The. A hero, a hero, ha a hero has two sets of, I wouldn't say skills, I would say attributes. Let's do another one. I guess we can call them qualities. All these would be appropriate. Ow, Hmm. Yeah, well, let's call them qualities. I think that I think that su summarize. I think that summarizes characters pretty well. I mean, like these are your qualities. Uh, each hero, hero has two sets of quality. Uh, each uh, qualities. They are person or personal quality. Their personal qualities and their and their combat qual and their um. Their personal and con uh, two sets of qualities: personal and combat. We immediately go down to personal personal quality. Personal quality. A hero. A hero is a man. A hero is, is a man of good. Is a man. Uh, how do I want? The hero. A hero is a man. Oh, which to find him? In, which to find him in the field? While the mat, while their, while their secret identity, while their secret identity, and while they actually, while their secret identity and. Uh, ability and abilities maybe uh, may uh, may be up up for up for debate. Let's see. While their secret identity and abilities may be up for debate, 
their personal their personal quality their personal qualities define uh personal qualities indicate his ability yeah, actually, while well, his secret identity, well, a secret identity may be up for debate, their personal qualities indicate his ability, his ability, and the f ability in uh, on the on the case. Personal, there are there are a total, uh, there are a total of well, there are a total of five, there are a total of five uh, personal qualities. There are a total of five personal qualities. The the hero, uh, the hero assign assigning, assigning a four, three, two, 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 and a one, and a one, to each of the. Let's see, assigning a four, three, two, two, one, and a one to each of the each of the quality, each of the qualities of their of choice. Yeah, we just kind of understand what we're working with, how we're doing things. We select everything here. The qualities fraternity. It's the brotherhood of man. Da, 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 da. So. Hmm. Been obsessed with fucking tables for a while now. I may as well do more tables because. Tables are fun. Muscle, mask, ability, macho, macho, macho man. I gotta be a macho man. Muscle, mask, ability, macho, mystery. So. That. Actually, we can probably do we can increase the size up a little bit because we're going to put you dead center you're like haha there we are so if we want to break these down it's going to be something along the line of a hero a hero a hero's physical a uh, physical a uh, phys uh, physical uh, actually physical ability and physical ability and constitute and constitution constitution in the constitution in the field and actually uh hero's physical ability and constitution able to dish out able to dish out a nasty a nasty a dish out a right hook right hook or or carry civilian or carry civilians to or carry civilian safety simple and then we're going to do a hero, a hero. The quarter day, no water. Uh, if we do something else. So we want to do mask would be the idea of the heroic willpower. The heroic willpower, willpower of the hero. Their ability to push past to push past their 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 fear their fears as a as a person as a person and endure hardship and endure hardship endure hardship heroic uh and endure mental actually be mental mental um mental hardship this also plays. Actually, we should do, uh, yeah, no. Push past their fears in person and embrace, and embrace their, na and embrace their nature at, uh, their heroic nature. This is going to be, the, like, the, one of the big things with being hero is, like, if you have to ever debate on what's the idea of down here, the man behind the mask, which is kind of like your skills and stuff, you're probably going to be relying on the mask with a lot of things. <laughs> Moo mam ho me ma my mobility A hero is nothing without the ability uh, without the ability to leap in, uh, leap into uh let's see without the ability to leap into danger rush uh rush to stop a crime rush rush to stop crime 
much to stop crime or or jug or juggle um actually no uh heroes natural affinity for uh natural dexterity actual dexterity manual uh god how do i want to work like agility like mobility is always kind of like one of those things like speed and uh actually here's natural dexterity speed and hand eye coordination hand eye coordination allowing allowing them to be quick be quick on the, their feet quick on their feet and hands quick with their actually quick with their with their feet and hands oh yeah uh, Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Mumamo. Mumamo Mamai was my wrestling name in high school. Oh yeah. Macho Macho Man. Ah, uh, Sterling. Ah, uh, Sterling. Public opinion. Sterling. Uh, st uh, actually, a smile. A smile to kill. A smile to kill for. Or. Words to calm, words to calm uh, the, the panicked, and even the even the occasional flex all all pay all are are fundamental to a hero all fundamental to a hero's daily work. Smiled when a crowd words to calm the panic, and even the occasional flex are all fundamental to a hero's daily work. So it's kind of like, hey, this is kind of like your charisma stat, and you all kind of like understand, like, this is your charisma, you do things to this is your social ability. A um, mystery. Every, uh, every... Let's see, the hero, know, the hero knows that every, that every crime, every crime has a, has a culprit. Uh, the hero knows that every crime has a culprit, and every and every puzzle, every puzzle has an answer. And every puzzle has an answer. There is o there is only one truth, only one truth, and they'll find it. Yo. So this is like mystery is kind of like you're more of like your intel like intelligence generally speaking. That's kind of like how I want to envision it. Uh, we do. This sort of sending, so we just put everything there. Macho, macho, macho man. Uh, actually, so what we'll do is. Hmm. Hmm. We'll actually determine the we'll see we'll determine the number of dice they will roll for roll for most roll for most action roll for most actions roll for most actions a personal followers of here determine the number of dice they will roll for most actions these allow these allow the hero these allow the hero to assist one another assist one another as well Yeah, I don't really want. To. Yeah, we'll determine the number of dice they will roll for most actions. A personal qualities. Improved as the, well, the personal qualities can be improved as the hero develop develops both as a person. Let's see, both as a person and a. You know, just kind of understand. Being like, hey, do not understand, like, don't think like you're just stuck in this. So kind of like a basic actual, like, uh, if we're using Luca the Luchador here, because Luca did request that he was the sample character. Wrestling champ, uh, the masked man, the masked man of mystery has chosen, has chosen his personal quality, qualities as such. 
So he is going to do his macho is going to be what well, actually his macho is going to be two. Uh, we're going to do his mask is going to be three. His mobility is going to be two. His muscle is going to be uh, two. Muscle is going to be two and his mystery is going to be four. Then we need to... Yo, know, mobility one. He's not very fast, and he's not actually particularly strong, but he just is completely fearless and actually pretty smart. There we go. He may not be smart, he may not be... He, you know, he may not be uh, super strong, but he damn well knows what he's doing. Uh, yeah, there we go. So technically, anytime he's making, like, a mobility check, he's only going to roll a single D6, so people need to help him out with mobility stuff, because he's just not very dexterous. So, which that does lead us to combat qualities. Crime fight. Crime fighting. Here. Uh, be uh, mask vigilante. Uh, mask vigilantes are not always are not always going to be so. Uh, mask vigilantes are not always going to be solving crime, uh, crimes with deductive with deductive reasoning with deductive reasoning or or good looks or good looks. Oftentimes, oftentimes they are forced to throw down throw down with the. Slow down with the villains of uh, villains to stop their nefarious plans. Plans. Each of the each of the heroes each of the heroes will have five crime fighting crime fighting qualities. Ranked similarly similarly with a four three two two and a one and one and one. Uh, which we're going to do, uh, Stryker. Stryker Z. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, wrestle and stunt, stunt. Yeah, stunt. I fuck. This is where we go to the idea of blocking. Uh, the, uh turns away. Uh, turns away blows using their power. Using their powerful body, deflecting and. And uh, deflecting and redirecting, redirecting the, uh, redirecting the blow before it can successfully, before it can successfully impact. Before it can successfully impact, which goes to dodge, uh, using, using their nimble, using their nimble bodies, actually using their, uh, nubile, nubile bodies and, and enhanced reflexes. And re uh, using their nubile, nubile, I num, not numbile, nubile bodies and enhanced reflexes, uh, the hero, uh, the hero attempts, attempts to outright avoid or actually, uh, using their nubile bodies, enhanced reflexes, the hero attempts to outright avoid or sidestep or sidestep attacks. Uh. Uh, the uh, the shining uh, the shining fist of just the shining fist of justice or the devastating kick of a uh, kick of judgment uh, all have has 
has the hero has the hero uh, deal with a deal with a th deal with a threat directly. Not every uh not every not every battle not every battle is simple and often tie and not and the hero is hero may find them may find themselves needing to perform needing to perform dangerous acts dangerous acts of heroism. So finally this leads to wrestling. Hmm. I'm gonna fist him, greasy fist, amateur hero. <laughs> I'm gonna fist him, no fist him. What are you doing? Oh my god! Yeah, again, greasy. If you want to play the greasy fist who just punches people really well, go for it. Be like, greasy fist. What are you doing to that poor, that poor fucking criminal? I'm showing him the real fist of justice. No, no greasy fist. No. Oh yeah. Rap slap, uh, rap slap and tap criminals into submission. There we go. Rap, rap slap and tap. Uh, the hero turns away, blows, don't be three, there we go. Nubile body. Nubile is like one of those words that just, no matter what you do, it always sounds a little bit weird. Like, mmm, mmm. Like something feels a little bit wonky here. Like something isn't quite right. Being like, ah, yes, you have a quite nubile form. I'm like, man, you're gonna do something weird. Like, you're, like, my, my ass is in danger. <laughs> mm, crime fight, crime fighting qualities. Crime fighting qualities are always rolled with an appropriate with an appropriate personal quality. A uh, quality uh depending uh depending on the depending on the situ uh, depending on the situation and depending on the on the action on the action being uh depending on the action being used. Depending on the action being used. Go and then we select you. We select Lucha the Luchador. Luca the Luchador. Luca the Luchador. Uh, Monica the Luchador, the masked man of misery, has chosen his personal qualities as has chosen his crime fighting qualities as such. And what does Luca want to do? Obviously, his block is going to be is going to be three. His dodge is going to be one. Strike is going to be two. His stunt is going to be two, and is and with a re and a wrestle of four because he's a luchador. This is what he does. He wrestles you to the ground to do terrible things to you. Uh, so uh, at in to in to in total, uh, the masked uh, the masked man of mist. The masked man of mystery. Masked man of mystery has has actually has Macho to Mask three. Mobility one. Muscle two. Mystery four. Hello, phone. Uh, block three, 
dodge one, break two, stunt two, wrestle. WrestleMania! Oh yeah! I think it's time to do some wrestling, brother. Hey, brother. Hey. Hey, macho man. Are you a macho man or are you a macho loser? Macho man doesn't believe doing drugs. Macho man thinks you should get some, get your ass off the ground. Mmm, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, what we can actually do is we can do that. We do color and we immediately change it to zero. Yeah, we kind of understood this is what Luca the Luchador is going to look like right now. He's not exactly what we would like to call the super optimizer. Okay. Nubile, moist, and supple are the three most suspicious words in the English language. Yeah, like, no, anytime someone says something is nubile, nubile, it's like, oh, yes, he's quite a nubile. I'm like, do you have, like, Filipino fucking pool boys? Like, like, do you have, like, Filipino pool, like, pool boys around? Like, moist, moist is just one of those, like, yeah. Eh, words. Eh, no one likes moist. That's just a supple is like do you, like are you on Epstein's island? Like anytime the word supple is used, it's like are you on Epstein's island right now? If I look at the little black book, or is your name like written on page two? Like what is it? Like <laughs> see, and it's always bad. Like if you ever want to come across as like a complete fucking pervert. In any conceivable math method, all you have to say is, "And she, and, oh God, this is gonna sound terrible." And she was nubile, supple, and moist. If you ever want to just like, you are just a bad person if you say that. Like I have like, inadvertently, you know, fucking beyond the grave. Epstein has written my name in the black book. I like, it's right there. It's like a fucking death note. By just saying that line, just say it once to yourself in private. It just doesn't work. It's it's over. It's. Yeah, Risotto's even, you know, giving, you know, Risotto's literally ooing in the fucking chat right now. It doesn't work. And again, yeah, it's just anytime, again, just say that to yourself. Anytime you want to be like, man, I sure feel comfortable with life right now. You just say, and she was nubile, supple, and moist. And you will immediately feel dirty. It's great. Oh, jeez. See, I could picture Macho Man or Andy Savage just running a full fight team, just machops everywhere. Like, oh god, what are you, what are you doing, Randy? What's the plan? I'm gonna punch him, Randy. That's not a, Randy. Fighting is 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 pretty countered in this meta. You know what I mean? Like, and so are you, brother. As he you know, beats my fucking skull in from beyond the grave. So we've got the mask, so we got personal qualities, crime fighting qualities, and then we immediately go on to the man behind the mask. Which is... Hmm. Why are people sending me things? Why are you the way that you are? No guard with chops with fish. It's time.
yeah, it's... People keep trying to send me the weird fucking thing they decided to... Weird fucking New York City idol, which is just kind of weird. Keep sending that to me. It's, it is a very weird new thing they put up. I don't know why they keep trying to put up things like that. It's it's like, why? Just put up something normal, please. Oh, uh, the man behind the mask. Uh, even when... Let's see, even... Uh, what? While there is the, the mask to... While there is the mask to shield the identity. Identity of the... Identity of the hero... Is... Is ever present. Man behind it is ever present. And no matter who they are and, and where they came from... No matter who they are and where they came from... Man uh, becoming becoming a vigilant man becoming a vigilante. Man becoming a vigil vigilante. The man becoming a vigilante has a certain a certain history has a certain history and background background that follows them. A certain history and background that follows them. Not only not only informing their combat. Their combat prowess, their combat prowess, impressive muscles, impressive muscles, or, or innate, or, or knowledge, or knowledge, but also, but also who they are, who they, who they are when the mask is off, who they are when the mask is off. Each hero, each hero, each hero has a certain, has, let's say, actually we'll say, has four not qualities. These would be, uh, hmm. Let's see, each hero has four skill sets which define which define their ability their abilities within the field. Uh define their abilities within the field. Uh with uh actually define their abilities on uh during their civilian life during their civilian life as well as their as well as their super, as well as their heroic career. Skill sets anytime anytime a hero's skill set skill set is appropriate. Appropriate. Anytime a hero's skill set is appropriate, they will roll. They add plus one D to uh plus one D plus one D or plus three P to end to the to the check. Allowing them uh, allowing them to add allowing them to augment their dice. Their di augment their dice to be more fit to be more efficient. More efficient, or increase the like, or increase the likelihood of success. So it's kind of like the idea is, hey, I have a skill set that says I am. This is appropriate. Like I am some like someone here that is you know vaguely appropriate. I can choose to say I'm going to roll a one d six. I'm going to add a d six to this. You know, I'm going to get a one to six, or I can add three pips. Now, what do I mean by three pips being kind of a, kind of interesting, uh, almost on the same quality? Let's say I have four d6. Now I have. I rolled pretty damn well. I've got a six, a five, a th uh, three, and a two. So I rolled a total of eleven, uh, fourteen, uh, fourteen, sixteen. I effectively rolled sixteen on my dice. But I'm like, ah, dang it, you know. But I have a skill set. Now I have two options here. If I choose to say, hey, I want to take a plus three, pi you know, plus plus three pips to this, I can suddenly change my one, my one five to a six. And my one three to a five. So now I roll, you know, in total, effectively 12, 17, 19. I've rolled 19. You may say, well, that's not as valuable. But what is valuable is that I've taken two D6s. I have two sixes. Which means I can pay it forward a lot easier. However, the other dice is let's say you're only rolling like two dice, it may be more valuable for you just like just give me another dice, because I just need more dice. And you roll and you be like me and roll three ones. Uh, 
Uh, that should be more efficient or increase the likelihood of success. If a actually, if a hero has a if a hero has a skill set has a skill set when assisting when assisting an ally, they will add they will add a plus two d to the roll to their roll to the roll instead of the instead of the usual plus one d. Because yeah, that's kind of the idea over here is it's like hey, if you have a skill set, you get a plus two d instead of a plus one. You effectively it's a hey. You're, you're you're only rolling 3d6 and that's a five you know, oh no you're rolling 3d6 and that's a 4d6 challenge and oh man that looks pretty difficult they rolled an 11 and you're like i don't know i don't think i can do this you can be like hey i've got a skill set i'm gonna add two dice to your pool because i am helping you you and me let's do this i've got your back brother and uh you can be me and roll shit uh but let's say 10 10, 14, 16, 18. So I would have succeeded, but just barely. It's like, oh, cool. You know, you can actually assist one another a lot easier if you have a skill set. Um. Oop, nope, then we click there. We want to click there. Mm -hmm. uh, doctor by trade um a uh, semi famous uh, advertising advertising actor uh ad actually uh, ad uh, ad actor what would be some other uh, would it be some other fu funny one? Uh, we want to have. Uh, oh, uh, we'll add in. Um, we'll do. We'll do five jobs. So, doctor, you're an ad actor. You're a reformed criminal. Uh, I guess adding journalist is always appropriate in the in as being a superhero. Cause you got like this is always thing that always looks like journalist bad. Cause you gotta remember, journalists used to be pretty cool. People used to like journalists. You know, and then journalists happened, and then kind of ruined the image for everybody. Thanks, journalism. You're fucked up, journalism. <laughs> I can say that I've done it. I've done the. I've done it. I've done it all. Don't worry. I can say it. I can be a terrible person to journalists because I've done it. Twitter on the internet ruined journalism. Yeah, effectively. And but it's the funny thing with journalism is that Twitter and all that shit like ruined ruined things because it's like they made everybody a journalist and it's very easy to be a journalist now. But also incredibly fucking difficult. I think it was um Ethical was actually talking about this the other day. Where it's like we went from like it, well, that's kind of the issue because you got to think about it like this. We went from like nineteen, like eighty, let's say like nineteen eighty. Like if you wanted a news story, like somebody had to go out and do it. That was when you would see the guy out there looking at it. Like it was actually kind of like an event. Like oh shit, the news is. We have to rely on the news, and they had to help hold people up really high. But now you got to think about it like, let's even say like 2023, you know, 1983, you know, just 40 years later. And there's already a person there at the event. Someone's already recorded it. Someone's already given their commentary. They're seeing it. They're recording it. They're looking at it. And that doesn't pay. And like, why the fuck do we even look at the news anymore? It's like, why bother anymore? It's just not as valuable because it's hard to get news. So, but it also became a more of a business over time. I think that's kind of like one of the other things that's kind of an issue is it's no longer about, hey, we need the the, the news. We need the, no, it's, hey, we need to get clicks. We need to get information. We need, we need to get the thing to appeal to an audience and our shareholders. Uh, if I were a father and had a daughter who became a prostitute, I would not despair over her. I would continue to hope for her salvation. But if I had a son who became a journalist and continued to be one for five years, I would give him up. <laughs> now, undercover journalists and people that go out of the countries, the only one that put in legwork. Yeah, it's. 
And the thing is, like, people don't forget, like, other countries actually have a lot of these, like, journalists who actually risk their fucking lives. You know, in Mexico, Jesus. You want a dangerous fucking job? You be a journalist in Mexico. You will get fucked up and you will die. Uh, and the thing is, like, we don't hear about a lot of the guys doing, like, actually kind of important work. Because those are the guys who don't usually, you don't see a lot of them because they're not really supposed to be seen all that much. It's like, here's the big story. Uh, it's important because, like, we did a really well-researched thing on this. But it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. And capitalism ruins everything. Yeah, effectively. It's in more than, more of the, um, I think the best way to think about it. Also, thank you for uh, donating two bits. Good job, everybody. Two whole bits. Good job, team. Uh, <laughs> one, of the, like, one of the big things about it, it was we need to increase viewers. We need to get more clicks. We need to get more money to appeal to the shareholders that run everything. That's like the weird thing that's going on now. And I can actually show this because um, I can do that because I'm me. Is uh... Yeah. Yeah, you, you get like weird shit like this going on. It's like, oh, hey. Like, it's not for sale, but it's also, like, we've just laid off a bunch of people. Like, you gotta remember, one of the largest fucking, like, was respected for a very long time as being, like, a internationally recognized, like, this is the Washington Post. And, like, this was a very important thing. Jeff fucking Bezos owns it. Jeff Bezos owns fucking the Washington Post. And... They're like, oh, we kind of like, we may want to sell it. We may want to give that around and like, we may want to like shift it around, which is really weird to think about of like the richest man in the world owns like the, one of the richest men in the world owns this fucking, you know, news site. You know, Marshall Bills lost a lot of all credibility years ago, even before the Amazon man bought it. It's not like, but the thing is, like, you can, how do I want to, you can attempt to recover credibility, but it's really hard to do it when the richest man in the entire fucking world uh, decides that, like, <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't think people quite understand how fucking wealthy Jeff Bezos actually is. Yeah, it's like, I don't think people ever quite realize how fabulously wealthy these people are. Jeff Bezos does never, never needs to work again. Like, I don't think people quite understand, like, yeah, we're not partial, they say, with an Amazon logo on their shirt. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of like, like, and the thing is, you'll notice that with a lot of, like, just about any news guys. Like, we're non-partial, however, uh, the issue is a lot of them do have to play by the rules it's not that it's, again i don't blame them here's the thing this is the thing that you know will always will, will always save me i do not blame them yeah it's like i, I can't really be like man you guys are bad people it's a fucking business you guys need to stay, you need to keep your lights on, you need to keep, like, like, you need to keep everything going, and it's hard, it's real hard. And, like, I don't blame them, and it's just kind of how... Kind of, again, it's the nature of the beast, and it's uh, not a fun beast, but it's one that we kind of all, everyone in where I went to school kind of understood that was uh, kind of the problem. Let's see, example, um, what would be some other fun examples? Example, um, mm, doorsmanship.
Uh, example hobbies, outdoorsmanship, sailing, game dev. Um, to male model, example hobbies. Mm -hmm. Is that actually how you spell? I know I don't think that's how you spike one. It is how you spell it. Huh. Technically I should do just be one thing though. Taekwondo. Hmm. Uh, what would be some? What, what am I looking? So it would be example jobs, hobbies, skills, and then this would be the. Jiu Jitsu. Do 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 do. Let me just uh, and let me see. So it would be jobs like this is what you what you do. This is like a hobby you have. This is just like raw skills you have. You have a skill of conspiracy. I guess we can do um. Associations, if I guess that would be like it would be example, um, example circles, which we can do, um, This is pretty much like you have tie, you have circles with people, like you have like actual influence around. Um, <laughs> like you're homeless, like you just don't, like you have the power of the homeless around you. Because people just kind of know where you are. Um, So we'll do homeless shelter. Uh, what do we want? Uh, we would want to do a uh, exotic pool boy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, exotic pool boy is, you know, is effectively, you know, <laughs> so the idea being more along, it's like, hey, this is like my actual job. Like I am. A, this is what I do for a living behind math. Like these are some this is a hobby I have. This is a skill I have. And then when it comes to circles, it's, hey, these are the people I know. So I can kind of like say, hey, I've got a bunch of police ties, so I kind of understand what's going on here. Or, hey, I am literally a suburban, you know, lad. I am from suburbia. I know the location. I know where to find things. Or, hey, I work with the homeless a lot. This is what's going on, I think. Or, hey, I'm an exotic pool boy for, you know, a bunch of really rich people. And because of that, I know the rich people stuff. Or, hey, I'm a money mogul. I know, like, a bunch of financial shit. Uh, so that's kind of like just, here's a few examples. And then we're going to go to Luca the, Luca the Luchador. Uh, we do this.
Uh, what would be the like uh, offensively like Dutch name? Let's get a Dutch name generator. Dutch names. What's some funny Dutch name? Bup, 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 bup. There we go. That's a that's a silly name. <laughs> Steam, uh, Seaman, uh, Nijistein. Under the mask, under the mask, CG, uh, Seaman, uh, Nijistein. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, Internet Pirate. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Lucha Libre Otaku. Mm. 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 There we go. Extensive knowledge on the world of nautical engineering. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Yeah, we can do that. We can do uh, exotic. We'll do uh, exotic pool boy. Do exotic pool boy. Uh, Former criminal, but then we have to add one more uh, example job in. We can probably do um. Hmm. There we go, other clubber. So it's kind of like the bartender. Yeah, we can do with bartender. Actually, I know what we can do. Uh there we go. So these, these are just kind of examples, and they can go to different... They can go for different angles at different locations. So it's like, hey, I want to be... You know, it's, it's by virtue of having... Hey, I have a... You know, I'm an internet pirate. You kind of form circles around that. And so you can make a pitch for like, hey, I want to make this role here. But you say, hey, I'm a boating expert. By virtue of having that, they're very open. That's kind of like one thing I want to kind of reinforce is like the skills here are very open. Actually, you know, um, mm. Mm -hmm. Now let's say a combat orient a uh, actually a crime fighting oriented skill set skill set it is it is it is not mandate not mandatory every not every but not every not every hero needs so it's kind of like the idea of being like don't have like you can take combat ones and they are going to apply to combat like that's going to be a thing like Hey, you can apply these to combat. However, gag biker, gang by yeah. <laughs> I knew you. I don't I don't think you I don't think you messed that messed that one up there was so have no fear. I don't think you messed that one up at all. Hmm.
Okay, we slap an image right there, we slap an image right there, we probably don't need to slap an image right there. Okay. Now we get back to our, uh, consist our consistent problem. Welcome to One Man Ultimate Survivor. So what we're going to do while in the field... Hmm... While crime, while while crime never, while, while crime never sleeps, a hero is a hero is only human, and their and their endurance will only will only support will only support them so far. Each hero has a. Um, yep, we're 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 effectively back to ground zero. The 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 grand issue of the matter. How do we want to do this? So, uh, hmm. Oh, 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 oh. Back down to Metal Gear Storm. All right, so let's think about it like this. We need characters to feel heroic. We need them to feel pulpy. We need to feel make them feel like two-fisted pulpy heroes leaping into danger to fist justice rectum. How do we do this? Question. Do we do a two-state solution in which we have a health bar and a stamina bar, but we have to manage them effectively independently? Heroes are going to be a little bit more enduring, if that makes sense. And because they're going to be a little bit more enduring, that means they're going to be able to manage right. Hey, I can do stuff. I'm able to do things. I'm able to actually survive on the other hand we can start abstracting resources each of them have their own advantages and their own disadvantages if we abstract health we effectively just have to tie everything to stamina but then how do we how do, effectively the issue i'm having is that there's only really one bar to work and that one bar isn't really going to have much to play around with. And I'm like, okay. But maybe that's fine. Maybe it's okay. Or do we say fuck it and just abstract them both out? But then that kind of brings it back to the, the, the first the first problem, doesn't it? Hey, I can't. We have two bars to play. I'm scared around bars. Because this isn't really like a, th like, how do I want to do this? Like, hmm. Because one of the ways that I was, like, one of the games I'm basing this off of is the idea of Sifu. Now, Sifu it has a thing called structure. And one of the ideas is that you can use structure is structure goes down. Pretty much if your structure hits max, quote unquote, you can disable a foe just as much as you can disable a 
this is as much as you can get disabled. So we kind of go right here, we bump it up all the way. You see this bar right down here? If your structure hits max, you're gonna get pretty much countered and you're gonna get your shit fucked up. On the other hand, if an enemy hits it all the way, you know, if you've managed to break an enemy's guard, you're allowed to... Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, you kind of see what he did there, right? Right there, you're allowed to do pretty much um, uh, finishers, that's the best way to kind of word them, is you break their stamina, they're not dead. That's the big thing, you haven't killed them, you haven't stopped them, their health bar has not reached zero yet, but you're allowed to pretty much do a takedown on them real fast. A lot, very easy, very simple. Under Mayo, under the Mayo collab. Uh, I've never actually watched this guy, actually. I like his videos, though. Watched a few. I know, yeah, I never watched this guy before. But, as you can kind of see here, yeah, this is under the Mayo, by the way. Like, it's that concept right there, being able to do a takedown of some variety. Where you've reduced their stamina, no, you've reduced their stamina, you've broke their structure. And then suddenly, bang, I can take you out. You know, it's like, I've spent time doing this. Now, in game, it would be, you can try to strike, in which it's not as efficient to break their, kind of their, their guard effectively. Or you can try to break their, or you can try to wrestle them, which is exclusively targeting them. But, hmm. That's a good answer, though. Because one of the other kind of things I was even thinking about is the idea of kind of like Sekiro and its posture system. That was another, that was kind of another idea is because Sekiro handles something like HP a lot different, which kind of inspired the original idea because it's like, okay, you know, posture system TTRPG and... There's a few different ones, and then there's, like, parry everything, like, whoever this guy, even Travis guy is, never, never knew, never read any of this before. This is actually pretty, pretty recent, but the entire idea behind it is that you're trying, if you manage to break their posture, you manage to actually break them. You can then immediately go in for, like, a devastating hit, which is either going to kill them outright or is going to clearly injure them in some way. But I've never seen it done in a tabletop game before. That's kind of the that's kind of the issue. It's like how do you put that into a tabletop game efficiently? Uh maybe like a stamina TTRPG like um That's okay. I didn't didn't really mean to learn about the DDR DDR community's fucking qualifiers. <laughs> never never learned that. But hey, what do I know? Um, let's see. Do we have any? Hmm. What does D and D not do? We think D and D is not supposed to do D and D. Why? Why is D and D not good? D and D. I cannot escape D and D. That's the joke. <laughs> Fori, ha ha ha. Modus RPG, Numenera, ha ha ha. Terimundo. <sighs> hmm. Ah, uh -huh, Telemundos. Hmm. D 
did you see the breeding difficulty test trend? That was well, that was like the fucking um, what was it? it was like the kink test thing that always that went around. I know the fucking VTubers are the V tweeters are on force with that with the breeding difficulty one. I'm like, okay, that's a uh, that's a uh, that's a new thing. <laughs> maybe maybe not. Let's not do that. Hmm. Maybe I need to look at something like um because Arkham like one of the original ones was actually doing Arkham combat, which was the idea of free flow combat. This is the idea this is how the Arkham system Arkham games actually work. It's the idea of this free flow combat system. Which is, you are always moving from A to B to C to D to E. You're always moving around. You're always, you know, trying to do things faster and faster and faster to, you know, get out of the foe. You don't want the foes to actually attack you because they can be pretty dangerous. Hmm. Huh. And you're using the gadgets, you're doing a bunch of things. So it's like, how do you adapt, like, uh, Arkham Combat TTRPG? Like, is, has anyone attempted this? Uh, I, <laughs> like, one of the things I would call it would be also... Uh, one thing I would also call it is, like, counter combat, but, like... This isn't really a thing. I mean, if we do like free flow combat TTRPG, do we have anything to ARPG with free flow combat? Best with free flow brawler combat. Gotham Knights combat with funny benefit. Tail with best combat ranked. Let's learn with the best combat and CB. What is CBR? I'm not disabling my ad blocker. Fuck off, CBR. Who has the best combat? 13th Age. Mut Mutants and Masterminds. Dungeon World. When did this come out? In the year... Year of Our Lord, October 11th, 2022. Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Okay. L Lancer. It's Lancer. Pa Pathfinder. It's Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Shadow of the Demon Lord. Wowie Zap. Only War does not actually have that good of combat. I'm going to say that. Star, Star Wars. And Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons 4th Edition. Dungeons and Dragons 4th Edition. I love you. Good job, CBR. I f still fucking hate you. Uh... Another video, video game. Brawler of some kind. Hmm. What's the... just not do anything yeah that's not mm. point at the lie on that list dungeon world that's what that's dungeon world doesn't have combat dungeon world in fact does uh problem is that you're uh, it's hard to do free flow combat Now, this is the idea I had. This is this is where, ironically enough, Wusa, you know, Wusa, not Wusa, uh, this is where uh, Nuni's idea came in with the idea of pay, uh, pay it forward. This is where I want to get the free flow idea going. Because the basic concept is roll, you know, you roll the dice, 
and then you're kind of you're splitting up these dice pools around. So let's say you have a total of how much do you have? Four. Let's say I have seven dice. I want to attack the first guy for four. Yeah, you know, I roll, and I got wowie zowie. I've got a six, so I can put it into my second dice pool. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to roll, and I got another six, so I can then use it to pay it forward. I could do another attack. You're jumping from enemy to enemy. Desperately just beating the snot out of them. Ugh. And you're constantly moving forward and forward and forward. That's where the free flow comes in. But you're also handing that advantage over to your allies. So someone, so you can pretty much all kind of work together to try to like effectively fund one ally to have a shit ton of dice in his pool to have him rip and roar across the entire fight. That's kind of the idea, because I know I can't do free flow combat perfectly. What? That's not the idea. I don't want to do free flow combat perfectly. I just want to take some of the concepts of it. The idea of just moving from A to B to C to D. Constantly moving around. Always paying it forward. You know, the best way to think about this game, pay it forward. You know, one other one was uh, the fucking Yakuza series of all things, you know, which was using its kind of more kinetic fighting style, which was, hey, uh, you know, in Yakuza, you don't, the second you stop, you lose. So you always want to keep that momentum going and getting hit, getting punched in the face stops that momentum. So it's like, okay, how do we, how do we do this? Now in Yakuza, they have a health bar. They, you know, you have a health bar and that gets reduced gradually and over time. So this is what I mean by it's like, hmm, how do I how do I put these things all together to make it work? In theory, iframes, you you effectively in uh, in theory what you can do for iframe for iframes would be uh you can pay it for to mitigate damage. That would be the idea. Like you're pretty much paying it for like free like damage reduction momentum map like that ninja game uh sort of but again i'm not strictly going for the idea of hey it has to be you know just like free flow combat or whatever no that's not the point not even about going long distances or anything that's not the point the point is going from enemy to enemy going punching you to punch you to punch another guy boom 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 being able to go very quickly and being able to deal with enemies while not avoiding taking damage yourself. It's not exactly movement. We're not worrying about movement necessarily because my idea for like the actual honest to God map is something more along the idea of go, go, go away. Is something more along the idea of the kind of like rings. This is a really bad interpretation of it, but it's kind of the idea of the of these rings, with a kind of like a one at the the very center of it. So it's the idea that you're constantly moving to and from to kind of maneuver to yourself to get you in a position to fight other people. One of the advantages is you want to get to the center ring here want to get here it's the most dangerous ring you can get targeted by the most number of people efficiently but but you're getting an advantage that's kind of the idea you're like you are able to you know do a lot more efficient things in as you are the king of the ring so using this it's a it's pretty abstracted but i want to keep it pretty simple it's like hey you've entered the field it's like okay i want to run over here and start punching this guy like i want to jump over here and start punching this guy Simple, easy, understandable. Don't need anything more than that. Hear me out, hear me out. Moving between guys is kinetic, rolling dice is kinetic. You roll dice, keep a few of them. And then the ones you don't keep, the next guy in line gets to roll on top of their dice. It's how I plan on doing it. Again, this is the thing that, that I I know how to do this. This is the thing. The combat system works just fine. I think the idea works there pretty easily, which is, again, let's say, for example, I have my uh, six dice. 
I roll, okay, cool. I'm rolling, I'm like, okay, I've got a six, I've got a five, I wanna strain a little bit of stamina to turn that into a six. I've hit somebody though, I've done my one action, I you know, fucking haymaker a guy, and he's on his ass, he's completely out of the fight. However, I can use those two sixes I have now to pay it forward. I'm paying it forward to the next carrot, to the next guy. And let's say he only has five dice, but now he's got two more to add to his pool. So he rolls them all together. Okay, he's got a six. He pays a little bit of stamina. He gets another six. But let's say he pays even more stamina and turns it another six in. So he's completely decimated one another guy. You've got three dice now. He can pay it forward. He wants just to do raw, more raw damage to this poor person. He does. He says, okay, two of these dice are going to do more raw damage. He's, he's fucked up. He's not looking too hot. Last die goes to the third player, and the third player takes his die, and he might even have more, and he rolls them all together, and he's like, okay, I'm gonna roll this, and he gets a one, he gets only one six. He's gonna use that to do more damage. Boom. Three actions have, you know, pretty much three actions have happened, but I've taken out three guys, maybe you've done a lot more damage. You've done something. Pay it forward. Because the idea that paying forward isn't necessarily just dealing more damage or paying, you know, giving it to another player. It's also like, hey, I've rolled two sixes here. I'm going to use it to walk out of the way. I'm going to move it to another location. I'm going to move it over here. Uh, let's see. Uh, you have two maps, the sphere and the shaft. The sphere measures the position. The shaft measures the momentum. You get stronger the further along the shaft you get, but you pushed out of the other side of the shaft. It resets and gets stunned. Uh, you get stronger the further down along the shaft you go, but if you get pushed out the other side of the shaft, you reset and get stunned. Shaft by beating people. Spunk knocked out of me. Yeah. See, this is where things start getting more complicated. This is where things start, I get. It's there. I know how to do this. I can see it in my head. The issue is, like, it always boils back down to this fucking little stupid issue, is this, which is, do we, if we treat, because I want the idea, if we scroll back all the way back up here, is this, because I, what I want to do, because again, it's only sixes that are getting paid forward, so I, what I want is to have a resource or something in place to say, hey, I mean, you know, I've rolled, I've got, um, let's say I've got a five, I've got two fives, but I need, I need to pay it for it. I need to give my, I need to get a little bit of an advantage to help the next guy, or I need to put these into another pool. You can spend two of a resource to say, okay, I'm going to increase these by one pip, one little pip. Now both of them are sixes and I can pay it forward. I can give it to my ally who now has two extra D6s, I can pay it to somebody else and now they have some more stuff. But that resource is also going to be tied to effectively the, this, is if you get broken, if you don't have any, lost it, you know, you get surrounded, you're gonna get your shit rocked because you should have been with your friends, you should be working together. Effectively, the idea of the shaft you're, you're effectively stating, which is the idea that you want to edge as much as fast as you want to get as edged edged as possible, is correct. That's what I want to happen. I want you to edge. I want you to get right to the edge of oblivion. But because at the right at the end of the round, if you manage to get through the entire round. Because you want to spend that stamina to block, you want to spend that stamina to defend yourself, you want to mitigate damage, you want to pay forward, you want to get as much as you can, you reset everything and you get everything back. Good job, team, you've done it. You've managed to survive, you've managed, you know, you get all your, you know, you get all your good boy points back, and you can try again. Or at least a set number of good boy points. That's the problem. It's not there yet. Don't know how to do it. Because, again, there's the brute force method. The brute force method is just you have two different bars and 
one is constantly decreasing. It's kind of like your health bar does not shift. Uh, kind of the, you know, kind of to uh, the highlight, you know, to illustrate this. Your health bar is not actually shifting. You are, it's like, okay, you know, you've got your full amount of health. You know, you're at uh, fucking, you are at uh, 100% HP. Every time you take damage, though, you know, it's, you're losing this kind of health bar permanently. You're not getting it back. There's no items or anything to give you back your health bar. So it's kind of this, you know, little bit of a risk anytime you do get hit because it's, you're permanently removing your health. Stamina, on the other hand, is you want to constantly reduce your stamina, but not get broken because they can immediately do damage to your health. But to do such, you're also yeah, you're also going to get it back real fast. So it's kind of this constant back, forth, back, forth. That's the problem with this method, is that it's simple, it's correct. Hmm, getting uh, I mean, the momentum has gonna getting hit pushes you toward one end, and your proximity to the bat determined how much stamina you are game. Hmm. How would we? Because we can make this, we can make the map simple. And that's the beautiful thing about this. I have the idea of making the map pretty simple. So if we just want to do like, maybe we do like three rings. If we do say three rings, and then we split them up into four, and we split them up into four, this is the king of the ring right here. So it's pretty much a, there's effectively one, two, three, there's effectively five rings, and we kind of kind of treat this as like the anomalous, you know, retreat area. You're kind of moving around. You can always target person, you know, one away from you. So, King of the Ring has the advantage of, instead of, you know, you are here, you're in the middle, you're getting a lot of things. We can actually probably say, you get an advantage to all your dice pools, but you're not, you're not being able to recover. Twitch, I need you to understand. This is for research purposes. This is very important. Maybe we kill two birds for, for academic purposes. Maybe we actually can't reach the purpose on the opposite side of the arena so the person in the middle can hit and be hit by everyone. So even abstract it further, so it's maybe like... um. So it's even like it's three. So it's kind of like the I. It's almost like it's three rings instead, where it's like, if you are out here, you're not recovering as, you're recovering the most stamina. You can really only deal with other people on the exterior. You're, you're kind of pulling back a little bit. You, you're getting a little bit staggered. Here you're recovering the absolute. You're, this is like your optimal combat range. Being in the middle would maybe be like hmm.
game design. <laughs> yeah, and, and this is always the funny thing when people are like Shaft needs to be sideways. Like this is like always the thing that you you've got to remember. Like this is like a vast majority of what game design is is like just me like looking at this and debating with myself about the finer points of like how the fuck does this work and uh, This doesn't answer the big question. This doesn't answer the question, though. That's the issue. This doesn't answer the question. Maybe... Maybe... If we want to go in the idea that... The... Hmm. Wait a second. Okay. Bear with me. There's one other game. He uses reference. One other game. Can bear with me. We need to establish two factors. We need to establish stamina. We need to affect the How do we establish stamina? I don't have the two we use the bar there's another game that you system like what we can do no that's not gonna work damn it the hell Break it down to its core need. What is our stamina? What is our health? Something that's going to represent our ability to do things. That's our, not only our ability to act to maneuver, but also our ability to turn our dice into better dice. These are our dice. Maybe we... Have active active use of stamina. We're always getting stamina back. We always want to edging. We're always going to be more and then. In all the stamina, our health. Is, we are in extreme fucking. Day. Enemy can say, "Hey, I you, know, you are exposed." I, you. What does our health look? in a fight. Ha ha ha. Fight me. First things first. Been punched. Decked in the face. Decked in schnoz. Dover. Happened. I'm gonna lose lost a resource health. Resource gain. And it's a resource gain. Or.
Our game is a resource game. And it's our Position in the ring is going to how much are you change it to something call it um endurance oh it is I'm, I'm walking i've i've stood up <laughs> i have i have literally stood i i stood up to ponder uh I have a very simple microphone that I can't carry with me. Okay. Our position in the ring is going to inform how much stamina we regain, so we automatically know a position where we are. That position is going to tell us how much stamina we're going to regain at the, we'll say, end of round. At the end of the round, we're going to regain a certain amount of stamina of pretty much what's happening to us. If we are far away, we're going to regain a lot more stamina. We've backed off. We aren't doing too hot, but that's the problem. Enemy is regaining stamina as well. Ah, no, that doesn't work. A lot of books. God damn it. Because one other one other idea that I you know it's wow, God fuck do I go with my gut uh, do I go with the easy do I go with the easy solution? Do I go with the easy solution or do I try to find or do I try to force some? Hmm. Well, welcome to uh, Notepad Schizo Notes. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm getting caught up on something. Getting caught up, I think. Getting. Okay, let's start from just complete ground zero. What do we need? We need a health bar. We need a way to track whether or not we are... Whether we are up or are we are down. We need a stamina bar, which is going to determine in... Uh, determine in... Um, not necessarily stamina bar, just like stamina... Stamina in general, which is just going to be our dice augmentation juice effectively what we need Once we get done with this, everything kind of clicks into place. All about clicking into place. And that's
How do I even want to word this? Endurance, uh, stamina, strength.
plus mask plus uh let's see the only um let's see so we muscle or the absolute highest it can be muscle or mask three macho two so it would be seven eight nine would maximum it could possibly be is nine while absolute lowest would be five so you'd only have a four difference still a I guess we can add in a flat value of like we add in a flat value of say like three. That flat value flip. It also gives them the players a little bit of health. However, gimmick being if Okay. Alright, alright, alright. Um each uh, each hero has their health and stamina. We're doing the one. We're going to do the one state solution. I think that's the. I I I, I keep thinking on it. That's the what I keep going back to. I don't know if it's going to be the right option. It's just the option I've decided on. So, doing this right each hero. Hmm. Would call it the health bar for right now. Hmm.
No, that's not going to work either because we still don't have a good way of tracking it. Fuck. Doesn't work. Track it. It's not going to work. It has to be. Or that's not. Because we're fucking analog. Analog. I don't know. I can see it. That's the that's the frustrating part is I can see it. Because the idea works fine on paper. The idea being that, hey, I have five health, I have five stamina. But how do you track it? That's the problem. How do you track it? You can't track it. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Unless you have like superior like unless you have another tool it's impossible to track reliably. You can't track it reliably because no one's going to I'm going to call it here. I need to think on this. No work. Fuck. 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 Damn it. Cock. Damn it. Fuck. God. Damn it. Ugh.